Hello, welcome back to another episode of Modded Kerbal Space Program, where um, I am on final approach with a much smaller, much easier to manage um, cargo. Oh, 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 turn too far. Yep. I turn am, too far. I am uh, launching my rocket again. I have failed so many times that uh, Narnia has orbited uh, back uh, to where it was like four episodes or three episodes ago. So, my rocket here is lifting off. Uh, let's also here... Let's just kind of keep this. Let's keep this steady here. We are at 3,000 feet. This has a pretty high uh, ballistic coefficient. Is a new word I, is a new uh, space term I learned. Or physics okay. term I learned. And... When something has a high ballistic coefficient, it means it's less susceptible to stuff like breaking the sound barrier and, you know, atmospheric resistance and stuff like that. So, sure. And I think I just kind of quasi proved that because it really wasn't affected by going through the sound barrier like that below 10,000. So, we're getting there. You can see there is some sort of effect happening right here. But, uh, all right, we're above 20 kilometers, so I'm going to start a turn here to prograde or to, 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 to the horizon. Ah, jeez. Well, we are behind the rocket, but yeah, this has a lot of punch on it, as I've just demonstrated. So uh, right now our Apple Apps is at 99,000. So let's get this thing up into space so we can flatten out our orbit here. Hopefully the craft won't completely rotate to the point where it's pointing in the wrong direction. Does have RCS. Does have plenty of electricity. It's got a reaction control wheel. Do a little bit of a burn here to get us kind of slightly more stable. Oh, and connected. Excellent. You know you have three Kerbals up here already, right? Yeah, I do. There's room for a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah, the the uh, the the Taurus holds like ten, I think. All right, let's not accelerate so quickly here. We got what do we got here? We've got fertilizer, huh? Why is that not working? Hmm. 
this is strange. Very strange. I don't seem to be able to... Hmm. I'm having some issues. Is it... It's not... Oh, maybe I'm pressing... Am I holding the wrong button down? I bet I'm holding the wrong button down. I was holding the wrong button down. Yeah. All right. Um. Agricultural module has water. We may need to bring up some tanks, like a, a tank, like a large storage tank with just water. Okay. Because I don't know how fast it's going to eat through its, like, internal storage. Yeah. Uh, there is a module on there that burns, uh, or that creates water or something. Okay. I have it on the first space station, the crazy station. All right, well, I am loading up the stuff I brought up. Fertilizer, water, should be some substrate. Let's get that orbit round out. How's your launch going? It's actually going very well. Uh, where am I? What's my distance? Uh, probably about the same as last time when I said it very well. But uh, what's my... <laughs> My, I am like right on my ascending and descending node, which is good. Oh shit! I ah. What happened? I crashed. Oh I had hey the, yeah, look at that! You did because I had the wrong thing targeted, and I thought I hit switch target, but it was switch to target. Mm. So yes. Substrate. It's been a... We had such a good time the last time. You yeah. didn't crash at all. No, I didn't. I'm wondering if you crashed this time because you've built... Is, is this ship significantly larger than the ship before? Well, not anymore. Because I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff. I thought you built a big heavy lifter. Well, I did, but like I, it, I took parts of, you know, I dropped stages. <laughs> gotcha. I wonder why you're crashing more today than you did last time. I don't know. It could be any number That's of weird. reasons. That's weird. Yeah, who knows? I don't have a clue. Um, all right. So everything is empty. That could be emptied. Weird. Okay, so this doesn't actually hold very much fertilizer, apparently. But the small container holds a lot. Uh, I don't. I don't actually know. And do none of these actually hold fertilizer? No, they don't. Okay. Weird. Very strange. Okay. Well, I guess it's time to bring this thing. Back into the atmosphere. I like this little resupply ship I made here. It's very manageable. Uh, 
and could probably be reworked so that it could bring up well, it, it can definitely be reworked so that it can bring up like five different solid goods instead of four mm-hmm. different and a water. It could be reworked so that you could bring up like um all the same type, but like a smaller amount than is in um like those large containers that are super heavy. Mm-hmm. Could probably be where you work to just break up life support. <laughs> yeah, life support would probably be ideal. Well, I mean, it. Uh, we did give this thing like, like almost two thousand days worth of life support, so we're not real. I'm not really super concerned about it. In fact, what does it say? that it has crazy station still has over a year yeah it has like 1800 days worth of food and oxygen yep and with the water that I gave it for the aeroponics mo- not aer- agriculture module it now has like 3,000 days worth of water. All right. Let's hope the uh, the heavy lift rocket is... Okay, good. The heavy lift rocket is still alive and well. And I just need its... Need it to flip and flatten out like now yeah. even though huh there is in my life support monitoring window yep there is a ship named untitled spacecraft uh-huh it has one crew on it it's marked as a lander And it has one day worth of. Oh, hey. I uh, crashed. Hmm. Or something. I timed out. You timed out? It says disconnecting client. Connection timed out. Seems like you're connected to your local host. <laughs> right. I think the game crashed because the, the whole screen locked up and is not doing anything. Okay, well, it's the first time I've crashed today. So I guess we were trading places because I crashed a bunch last time. (laughs) Okay, well, actually, I think I have to force quit the game. Great. Yeah, my crashes just kind of happen. My crashes aren't normal. (laughs) My crashes are drastically different than your crashes most of the time. Uh, What's wrong? I'm trying to raise my periapsis, but my apoapsis keeps going through the fucking roof. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully the game is starting back up. <laughs> Seems to be. Ah, all right, so we're in orbit, kids. Hey, hooray. Yes. You have cor- Kerbals aboard, don't you? I do, yes. That's unfortunate. Why? Because there's only like five or six minutes left in the episode. Oh. In the recording session. Yeah. <laughs> So we're definitely well above altitude of Narnia, which is what we wanted, because Narnia should be behind me. And it is. 
And it's pretty far behind me. So let's uh, just do some time warp. I haven't checked on the crazy station in a while. I don't know how much time has lapsed. Like, I don't know. When I looked at the the life support manager thing, it still had over a year worth of life support left. So, yeah, but I haven't checked on like the experiments or anything like that. So. All right, like, I'm gonna me... have to uh, just sit on one of these mapping satellites and fast forward until it gets everything I need. At yeah. some point, because it, for some reason, it reset the progress. All right, moving quite along, because we're, eh, I don't want to say significantly higher, but we're decently higher in altitude uh the distance is bleeding away kind of quickly here so before i actually got the camera to change and i don't remember how i did that but it's stayed on the planet and didn't follow the spacecraft around the planet hmm. so there's me there's that's not the ship what is that light light that's dan's resupply ship oh there's narnia kind of right behind and so, 708 is going to be our closest point. Now it's going to drop down to 571. Still going. So I also learned through this book that I'm reading uh, that uh, probably the reason why I don't get this, uh, the fact that <clears throat> as you approach... A, uh, a spacecraft, your relative your relative velocity goes down. Oh, crap, my Kerbal's died. Okay, well, I guess we don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, one of them just died because of lack of something. Oxygen deprivation. Okay. Uh, and... Well, we knew that was a possibility. <laughs> yeah, it stopped time warping for me, too. Yeah, it'll, it'll do that. The... Alarm clock or whatever will pull you out of. Yeah, so we'll just... Well, we will, I guess we won't be bringing up any Kerbals. Bill just died. Bill will await your reincarnation. Jahanmi just died. <laughs> I guess all your Kerbals are... Well, you got one left? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I... Start off with four, so right. No, he'll. Oh no, she just died. <laughs> All right, let's continue burning this thing retrograde so that we can make it crash back into the surface. So as I was saying, um, there's a. Uh, you need like six points to, I guess, determine your velocity in orbital mechanics as opposed to, you know, just three in normal, uh, in normal, mm -hmm. um, uh, Euclidean space. So wait, you you you're having a hard time with the fact that your relative velocity slows down as you approach? Yeah. Because we're both Well, I mean, okay, like I'm going Well, no, well, okay. Hold hold that here. No, wait. So like relative I'm going velocity is the difference in your velocities. Yes. Right. Right now, our velocities aren't changing. Right. So how is it going down? Um, because your orbit is approaching. 
your orbit is approaching its orbit. So as you change place in. Yeah, but it's going to con- as I get closer to it, it will continually be going down. Right. Until you start passing it again and then it'll start going up. Yes. Right. Because you're you will never have the exact same speed as your target until you're attached to your target or directly next to it within inches because yeah. as you move through space your the, the velocity it's giving you is it's it's orbital velocity it's it's your relative orbital velocity so as your position in orbit your height versus your target changes your speed changes yeah i guess my well the i, I guess the difference in the height between the two is changing Right. The problem is, is that you can never exactly match, you know, the thing's orbit until. Oh, yeah. Until you're touching it. And that's when, you know, your relative velocity stops changing. So as you're slowly approaching it, your relative velocity is always going to be going down. Unless you're like (coughs) burning towards your target and then. (laughs) Actually, why does it look like we're about to pass right now? Oh, that's that's you. I'm like, why is the Narnia passing me right now? I mean, I agree I am going faster than it right now. Right. Or excuse me, it's going faster than me. Because I'm at a higher altitude. Okay, so... Correct. In theory, if we were... You Technically, know, t- you're not approaching it. It's approaching yes, you. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's approaching me. So, yeah. So, like, if we were two cars on the highway, yes, then our relative velocities... Then our, our, our relative velocities would be going down if I was approaching it on the expressway. Yes. Right. But... The problem is, is that you're thinking in two dimensions when you're actually moving in three. Yeah. Well, I, I'm only because you're not really on a plane. You're because you're not moving orbit. in a straight line. You're moving yeah. in an orbit. You're also moving relative to the target, probably like vertically as well as. Yeah, because you're probably not your inclination is probably not exactly zeroed out either. No, it's not. Yeah. Ooh, actually, this next orbit, we're going to be, uh, we're going to have to slow down our time warp because we are, we are getting close. Actually, I'm going to start, I'm under, let's just go ahead and stop this now because we're getting there. So, <clears throat> even though, well, I, okay, all right, I guess it's gotten closer, but it's still moving at the exact same speed, and I'm still moving at the exact same speed. Anyways. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to think about it. Alright, so I'm going to point this ship uh, towards the target uh, retrograde here. And I am going to kill my relative velocity here. To the craft. It is 65 kilometers and approaching. I'm trying to make my ship burn up in the atmosphere and it's not going to work because... The game refuses to let me blow up a ship on re-entry. Yep. No heat problems at all. 
going to explode pretty big in the desert here, but... 60 kilometers in closing. Relative velocity is 20 meters a second. And my retrograde vector, well, it was lined up. Boom. Why is my... Oh, because um, it's passing me. That's why. Or no, it's not passing me. It's still behind me. All right. Well, that's the end of the episode. Um, Bobby will either finish his approach off camera or quick save and finish it next time. Um, if you like the video, click like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for some more Kerbal Space Program. Thanks for watching.